Welcome. I have a glaze that's scratchy and cutlery marking and um, I need to find out why. And so I'm going to look at the chemistry to see if I can answer that question. And I've already gone to Insight Live and I've logged in. So I'm going to show the recipes here. And then I'll add a recipe. And down here I'm going to click to show the import box. Now if I select all of this and I'm going to press on my Macintosh Command V to paste in the recipe that I have on the clipboard and then down here I'll click confirm and interpret it as text. Now here we can see that there's a couple of materials in the recipe that are not linking properly to the materials database to get their chemistry. So I need to see how those are named. So I'm going to hide this and then I'm going to show the materials. Now I guess the problem with Gersley Board is simply that it's spelled wrong here, but the KLN is a bit tougher, so I'm going to tell it to show the reference materials, search and click on E, look down the list and there we have it, E.P. KLN. And there's some alternate names there. So I'm going to edit here, fix the spelling of this, and then change this. Then I'm going to click Save and Done. Now, to most people, the chemistry that's shown down here is not going to mean a lot, but we can make that mean something if we look at that side by side with a typical recipe or a limit formula. So I'm going to hide the materials here. We'll click Show. I'm going to click Advanced Search. And then this little box here, I'm going to choose Limits. And that's batch number negative 3, Search and down here I'll click Green and Cooper Cone 10. So now we can compare the limits on the right with our recipe on the left. Okay, these are materials and these are oxides. Now you'll notice Inside Live is trying to calculate a formula for this limit formula and that's because it's finding some of these oxide names as secondary names for materials that are available in pure form as these oxides, but we won't pay any attention to this. This is what we were looking at here. And materials decompose to oxides during firing. And these oxides arrange themselves into a glass structure as the kiln cools. And stable structures happen when their relative amounts are within some sort of reasonable proportion. And that's what's expressed here. So these limits are about what a strong wear resistant glass looks like. So let's compare these oxides for a minute. First of all, the MgO. Notice it says the, the maximum is 0.34. And in our glaze, 0.41, so we're way over. And the alumina, and that is the oxide that is most important in establishing how hard a glaze is going to be and durable. And the minimum is 0.45, and we have 0.2. We're less than half of that. The silica which is the glass builder of the glaze. Obviously we have to have plenty of that to have a hard glaze. And the minimum is 3.5. We got 2.6. So we're way off. How about comparing this with just a glaze? A, a tem uh, say a transparent glaze. I'm going to compare it with a cone 6 transparent glaze. So I'm going to go to base glazes here. Click search. And maybe this one. And now Look at this, 0.48 alumina, we got 0.2. So we have alumina that's way lower than even a cone 6 glaze. And the silica is 4.2, we got 2.6. How about a matte glaze, a cone 6? Let's check that out. Now matte glazes would have low silica and high alumina in order to have the ratio necessary to make the matteness. We've got 2.4 or 2.5 here, and we're right on, we're just about that same amount. But our alumina is 0.44. Again, we're 0.2 or less than half. So again, this is probably a cone 2 glaze. Who knows what it is? So if this is like a cone 2 glaze, why isn't it melting and running right off the wear? The answer is right here. MGO 0.41. This one has none. And that magnesia, which is quite a bit over the limit, is holding that glaze melt on the wear. But unfortunately, it doesn't enable the glaze to solidify into a strong glass. 
but it still works. So do you think this glaze would also be likely to leach? The answer is of course yes. The silica and alumina and having things in the proper balance anyway are going to create a more stable glass and a more stable glass is going to be less leachable. If they're not in balance it's going to be less stable and therefore more leachable.